with just one click of a button, we are going to retouch this image professionally and I'm going to show you how it works. So once I duplicate my background layer, I press no command J or control J. I'll come to my action. And all I have to do from here is just click on this retouch for me action right here. And this action, what is going to do for me? First of all, with the retouch on me here, it's going to remove the blemishes for me. With the retouch on me dodge and burn, it's going to do my micro dodge and burn for me. With the retouch on me portrait volume, it's going to do my global dodge and burn for me. And the last thing I have inside this action is the eye vessel. And with the eye vessel, you can actually remove those red veins inside the eyes. So I use this action to retouch all my image and it gives me professional looking results. And it's what I used to edit this image I'm currently editing, the one I posted online. This is what I used to edit it. So let's just wait for it to load now and you're going to see the magic. All right, you can see that's finished retouching our image for us. So let's just see the before and the after. Just take a look at this image. See the before and the after. The before and the after. It's looking good already. So what you have inside this group is the head, which we used to remove our blemishes, the micro the jambon, the global the jambon, and the eye vessel. So let me just delete this action and do it manually. All right. So after I get to my layer, if I want to move the blemishes for my image, all I have to do is come to filter right here, come to retouch for me, and just click on retouch for me heal right here. And this retouch for me heal will automatically remove the blemishes first. So the heal is just going to load right now. So let's just wait for it to load. Okay, it has finished loading. So if I just zoom in, you can see the blemishes are no longer on the image. So let's take a look at the before and after, the before and the after, the before and the after. And from here, I'm just going to click on apply. Now, next I want to do right now is to retouch the skin using micro dodge and bone. You know how long it actually takes to do micro dodge and bone if you want to do it manually. Now, to use it with the retouch of me, I'm just going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing on control shift button A or command option shift A and just come to filter, come to retouch of me, just click on dodge and bone right here. Now, this dodge and bone will automatically do your micro dodge and bone, and this is the latest version of retouch of me dodge and bone. It's fast and more accurate, right? You can see. It has finished loading. There is no delay. It's just going to load as quickly as possible. All right. Now, if I just zoom in right now, you can see. Let's see the before and after. Take a look at the image. Just take a look at the image. See the before and the after. The before and the after. And from here, you can choose to move the blend even more to add the amount of the jumper you want with this blend slider right here. So if you want less, just take it down. It's just going to add a tiny bit of micro the jumper. If you want more. Just take it up. I'm just going to add more dodge and bone for you. So if I take it to 200, let's see the before and after. See the before and the after. The before and the after. Obviously, it's looking too much. So I'm going to take the blend down a little bit like this. Now, this new retouch for me dodge and bone is really fast. I recommend it. So also for the warmth, if you want the place that you dodge and bones will be warm, you can just move it up a little bit to add a little warmth to the place which you dodge and burn right here. All right. So I think uh, let's use. 130, 130 works for me. I'm going to take the worms down a little bit. All right. Now from here, I'm going to check this soft light layer and just click on apply right here. So it's going to apply as a soft light layer. So you can see the dodge and bomb map right here. You can see the part that is dodge and the part that is burnt for us. Now for me, what you're going to do, just come to your blend mode. Since we change it to a soft light layer, come to a blend mode, change from normal to soft light. And that's all you have to do from here. So. This is the before and the after. The before and the after. And the good thing about it is that if you feel it's too much, you have the ability to just reduce the opacity just like that. So I think I'm going to do the opacity to 80. 80 works for me. The before and the after. Now, if you want to do global dodge and burn to your image, I'm going to create some visible layer again by pressing now command option shift A or control shift alternate A for any windows. Once I create a stamp visible layer, I'll come back to my filter again, come back to the touch of me, just click on portrait volume right here Now this portrait volume is the global dodge and bond all right so let's just wait for it to load all right so you can see it has finished loading also with the blend right here you have the ability to increase the amount of global dodge and bond you want for your image or this is so i take it all the way to 200 let's just see the before and after so you can see the effect let me zoom in a little bit so just take a look at the image for the global dodge and bond the before and the after the before and the after Obviously, it's looking too much. So I'm going to take it to about 100. All right, so let's see the before and after, the before and the after, the before and the after. So this one works for me. You can also choose soft light layer and just click on apply right here. 
now you can see where it's dodge and where it's bond for us so from here come to your blend we'll change from normal to soft light and just reduce the opacity a little bit just like this all right so you have different options inside the touch for me you have the touch for me clean which can help you clean your backdrop you have the touch for me color match to match color if you want to color grade the image to remove dust to remove fabrics to remove mattifier also to whiten eyes and teeth all right also to even skin tone so there are a lot of options but if you're just starting out uh, i guess you get only the dodge and burn and the heal and maybe the background clean up also i only recommend you get a retouch from me if you are making money off photography and retouching because it's quite expensive and if you use the link shown below you're going to get 25 percent off any purchase you make right now so let's just color grade this image and just do the final touch for this image so let me just go by everything i did together so you can see the before and after so this is the before and the after the before and the after and then next time i'm going to do i'm going to create a star visible layer and just color grade this image so i'm going to press our command option shift e and just first of all i'll copy it 4x5 for instagram i only scope 4x5 for instagram because it works for me also i'll make sure my content aware is selected so under your fee make sure you select content aware and just click on ok now for me what i'm going to do i'll come back to my filter i'll come to camera filter i just want to color grade this image so i already have a preset that is to color grade this image i'll cover my preset just click on this mid black and orange right here just take down the amount a little bit like this all right also from here i can choose to make more adjustment if i want to go like this works for me or maybe i'll just take the blacks inside a little bit and just hit ok now once i hit ok i'll come to my action just click on noise right here to add noise to the image i like adding noise to my image right now i don't know why i just feel just bring the image to life so i want to add noise and just take down the opacity a little bit to about 30 percent and this works for me now this i'm going to do i'm going to come to my adjustment come to my levels and just add contrast to it so i'm going to hold option and just move the shadow part inside a little bit until i see a little bit of color so like this works for me i want to stop here also i can do the same thing for the highlights so move it a little bit so i hold option or alternate move it inside so like this works for me i feel the shadow part is looking too much so i'm going to take it down a little bit like so all right so like this works for me let's see the before and the after this is the before and the after and finally to add that white frame around it i'm going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing or command option shift e or control shift alternate e once I do that, I want to press or command A to make a selection of the whole image. So you can see right now the image is selected. Once I press or command A or control A to make a selection of the entire image. So I come to my edits. I come to my stroke right here. Once I come to my stroke, I'm not going to use a width of about 100. And make sure your location is set to inside. And from here, just change your color to white or any color you want to use. I like to use white. So mine is only set to white. And click on OK. From here i'm going to click on ok i'm just going to add that frame around it and to remove the selection i'm going to press or command d to deselect so let's see the before and after the before and the after the before and the after now to save my image i'll just come to my file click on export click for save for web legacy from here i make sure optimize is selected embedded color profile is selected my quantity is always set to 80 or 75 so for quality, I use between 70 to 80 for my quality. And convert to sRGB is selected. And this one right here are the default. For me, I'm just going to click on save and save my image. I hope you find this video helpful and useful. And if you want to learn how to get your realistic background and apply it to your image, check out this video right here. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay creative.